Welcome back here, 2016 National Collegiate Paintball Association Championships. I'm Maddie Marshall, alongside my longtime friend, paintball legend, Kevin Catfish Garcia. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Glad to be back out here. Yeah, great to have you back here. Another year of college championship paintball. Uh, you've been here at this event many, many times before. Um, your thoughts on coming back this, this season and uh, getting a chance to call these games again? Well, I mean... I like calling these games for the main reason. It's one of the hardest formats in paintball, I believe, because there's no rebuilding for these guys. Because, I mean, you, you keep Good a player point. for four years, and, I mean, you're lucky to get another star, you know? And you don't know exactly who's going to – you're always hoping every year yeah. that somebody that's that's either has a lot of talent and has potential yeah. is going to come in or a guy who's been playing for a couple years and, you you know, you get those guys and they can build around them. So, you know, UConn Husky is a team that's won this tournament in the past, but it's been a few seasons, you know, since they've seen that top level and uh, looking to see what they're bringing here. I mean, they have a couple returning guys. You know, we've seen Bernard Dacus out here. We've seen Connor Tluck before, John Stingle. So, you know, we'll see if the rest of the guys that have come onto the squad can help produce results and they're playing against you know the Kennesaw State Owls uh, you know Kennesaw they've been Little. also playing in this division for a long time looks like Kennesaw they're gonna be on the left hand side of your screen doubling up in that center off the break and looks like UConn also able to make it a body up there in the center but they lose a body coming out wide oh, here man. snake side as Tluck dying early what's going on here in the middle it looks like Kennesaw is getting shot out of the middle he comes around oh yes a foot massage yeah he got he got two of them right. two for one trade that's not bad yeah, so looks like trying to do damage control. UConn running all the way over from the D side. The back player is going to come all the way to the center. There's no one on this side of the field right now for UConn. We'll see if Kennesaw can figure that out. They have Kevin Hampton. Kevin Hampton, he's out wide. He should get into that snake and start making some moves here. Gobble up some of this real estate that's being given to them. Well, you know, he didn't do that, and that allowed UConn to be able to to uh, displace and get a body out a little bit more, a little wider. He's now come over four bunkers. A little safety valve action right there. Yeah, and looks like he gets a kill too, trying to even things up a little bit as the body count has dwindled for both of these teams. Just two players left alive for UConn, and I think there's two or three left right now for Kennesaw. So we got uh, one of the let's see, Connecticut players on the Dorito side. Was it a two on two? Yeah, it is a two-on-two. Two. So there's the two players oh, right there. one-on-two so quick. So I don't. Let's we'll see who this is right here for UConn. But he's really saved the day, yeah. and he's going to try to run up to that center. I do a little. Doesn't know that anybody's action. in there. <laughs> oh, let's get him out of there. Looks like the Huskies will take this one. I think that's Siofari. Oh, yeah. Looks so, like he's hit. He so doesn't want to touch that flag. Well, Siofari, yeah, didn't grab the flag, but Siofari is the reason why UConn was able to win this point. I mean, he was the back guy on the D yeah. side. All the way over there, he looks over, sees everybody on his team die, and has to reposition, reposition four different spots he takes, wins two gunfights, saves the first point here for UConn. Definitely a good move to kind of close out that field, especially that side of the field where it was just wide open to Kennesaw. You know, and that's, I mean, Kennesaw did have the body advantage there for a little bit, but not long, and it really wasn't. It was, it was that break, you know, that trying to keep five bodies alive on the break is relatively hard on this field, and we've seen it in the two matches this morning. It was just, you know, it's difficult to keep all your entire group of guys alive. You know, each team's got five guys, and and it's, it's tough out there to live off on the break. Every field out's a little bit different. Sometimes it's survivability off the break's a little easier, but so far here, this this particular, with this layout at this event, we've seen a lot of guys die off the break, and yeah. that was kind of just the problem for both teams, but, you know, just better heads-up play there by Ciofari on the... Uh, We'll start it on the D side and then come all the way around. Kind of save the save his team, save that point for them, for sure. Yeah. So got uh, you know two minute breaks in between these these matches here or in between these points. Ten minutes on the clock in the halves. Kind of cool to see that OG X ball style still played. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. As you're very familiar with, as, yeah. you know, that's where you cut your chops. Well, you actually, you cut your chops in the woods, but... The uh, good old 10-man days. Yeah, but uh, but then as, you know, things emerged out of the woods and, and we started seeing seven-man air ball. Things evolved, yeah. Things evolved, and we're seeing this replay here. There's Kennesaw, and you can see, um, yeah, he caught one. Can't really see the hits very well on those the jerseys they got. Kind of hide the hits a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I like that. That's kind of... So, right now, seven minutes, a lot of time to go here. Is that first point scored by UConn? We'll see 
you know, again, yeah. when when we come to these events every year, Catfish, and you kind of spoke to this a little bit. It's it's tough to keep your your uh, your squad relevant. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, can you imagine Dynasty losing four guys? Yeah, every couple yeah, years. Yeah, every every four years, or you know, or X Factor, and for that matter, you know, these teams won't survive like that. Yeah. You know? So now heading back into this match. UConn sending a body all the way to the center off the break. Pretty good breakout for UConn. Five bodies alive for them, and they've spread the field pretty decently. So we have a Kennesaw, and someone's having a flag party in back Dorito corner. Dude, yeah, the... the it's a red flag just the, sitting there. The, the referees have been merciless oh. so far here, as we have seen penalty after penalty after penalty, and now a major on Kennesaw in that back corner bunker on the D side. Couldn't see who that was. I think they're getting bonuses for the flags that they throw. <laughs> the referees? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they've, like I said, just unrelenting penalties as we've seen for the, through the first two matches. Uh, Tluck. We come up, run up the middle, and nope, denied. Yeah, well, Tluck made it in the snake. Uh, you can see that was running through the center there for UConn, but just bodies dropping everywhere for Kennesaw. As the, you know, we saw that penalty assessed, that brings two bodies off. It's the guy that gets shot, and if he plays on with an obvious hit, it's going to get that major. And uh, things just not looking good early here for Kennesaw. Kennesaw has been losing the snake battle so far the last two points. So she looks for them to switch something up here, hopefully. Well, it's been tough to even analyze in these first two points the look that Kennesaw has given because they lost a bunch of bodies off the break in that first point. And then after getting a decent break here, they lose two bodies immediately for that major penalty. And they're going to have a minute 27 seconds left on that penalty. So. Let's check out this penalty, or hopefully you can see the penalty. You see in there on the breakout, that's Kennesaw. It was a nice lane run and dove in. Not shooting his gun though. And then, so he's going to lose a gunfight here as you can see those bodies walking off behind him. That's why he's kind of wheeling, dealing back and forth. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's just <laughs> Enrique, Enriquez, Cameron Enriquez. Not much he could do though at that no. point. We've all been there before. You're yeah. one of the last guys left alive, penalties assessed, bodies are dropping off, and you're just trying to whip your gun back and forth and hope to God you can do some sort of damage That's what control. what we like to call living behind the gun at that point. Yeah, absolutely. So let's check in with Lauren Kelly, third member of our broadcast team. Maybe she can bring some insight into what's going on with Kennesaw. Kennesaw's just having a hard time executing with the five men they were putting on the field. You will see some new players going out on the field to see if they can get some momentum going. They are trying to lock down on their snake corner and get to the X early on to ensure that they can get the kills they need in order to get the points. Back to you. Thanks, Lauren. Well, yeah, getting up into that center 50, as we see, new bunker set this year, Catfish, and this is kind of your first look at it here yeah. live. What do you think? Your thoughts on it? Um, I don't know. I like the X. I like the, the moves that you know a lot of these kids like to go through the X. You know, the, the W. Well, that, I mean, they yeah. can jump up and do a little snapshot action, but well, and you got to be pretty tall to play that yeah. bunker efficiently. And right about five nine, five ten is is about the height limit to play all sections <laughs> of that bunker. We saw some shorter guys play it well this year so far in the two major events that we've seen with that bunker set. And people seem to actually really like it. It was a controversial bunker, but I you know, saw people really like it. Here, so, losing a player so as well. That's what Lauren was talking about. Get a body up in that center, and it looks like he gets run yeah. down as Cameron not able to stay alive. Nice move by uh, the Huskies. You know, you see a guy in there, go and take him out. Yeah, it looks like the Huskies are... Um Want to go snake side again? They they know that a Kennesaw can't stop them going that way apparently, as they filter two players into the snake side. Kennesaw looking to stop that snake move as they have their two back snake bunkers, looking down snake, looking like. But now pretty interesting run from UConn to get to snake two. Ran Ooh. from that center and uh, body slayer. Yeah, Kennesaw loses another body. We'll see if everyone can play clean. Is 34 seconds left, and that stingle on your screen with a pretty nice move from that center. Uh, but Catfish, there was eight penalties in that last match alone. Yeah. Eight lovely penalties. I mean, they're getting bonuses out there, man. I, well, I do. I truly believe that. Well, and the refs are, you know, just kind of keeping things. It's, they're setting the tempo right away. They're like, hey, we're going to be <laughs> very hardcore on you guys. Yeah. And it's Stingle kind of arguing with the last players left alive, yelling, hey, run that as Tluck. Oh, so they want to run the timeout. Oh, they're going to put up the shooting gallery right here. This is, uh, mercy, I guess. You're going to show some mercy. I don't agree with that at all. Yeah. I, to be honest, I, th there's no reason to do that other than the, f the the innate joy of blasting somebody when they're pretty much relatively defenseless, <laughs> don't have a bunker to hide behind and forced to come out. Uh, as it looks like Mexican the point is good. Off right there. You'd see this replay. And see, there goes the run-through in that center. So UConn is really playing the 
you know, the aggressor here, even on the counter punch. And there's another kill. Oh. But the point on what was going to make Catfish was that I don't agree with that. Why would you wait and blast the guy coming out of the box? Hang that flag and keep that penalty on the clock. If, I, you know, it's some people are just ruthless. I don't know. They just want to shoot someone up or, you know, it's... It's not nice. No. That parent, you know, well, definitely not nice. Well, paintball out here. Yeah. You know, it's a little hardcore. Uh, let's check in with Lauren here. She looks like she's in the Yukon pits, and they're doing real well, real, uh, real, real well right now. Thanks, Maddie. I am in the Yukon pit. There was some disagreement about whether or not to hold off on hanging the flag. I think they misunderstood. They thought he was going to come out of the box sooner than he was. So they were concerned he was going to shoot out the players or um, it was going to be a dirty hang, which is why they waited. But after that point, they came they came off the field in the pit and they said they have to save the time on those penalties as much as possible so you won't see those mistakes be made again back to you thanks lord yeah that's a good pickup from th the rest of the guys in the pits because th just what we were talking about up here they probably said the same thing to their guys as they filled into the pits hey don't do that preserve yeah. the time on that penalty and it looks like a timeout has got to be called by Kennesaw. And this is this is the time to call a timeout. Yeah. Yeah, it's early on in the match. There's still five minutes and 31 seconds left to go here in this first half. But Time to regroup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Time to regroup. And you and I come from the old school of paintball. You know, if that happened to us, you know, it comes back tenfold, you know. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. Oh, if, if you were the guy coming yeah. out of the box getting blasted? Yeah, I come oh. back tenfold. We you and I are old school. We you know? used to have the 10 to 1 rule, yeah. right? You know, yeah. if somebody gets a cheap shot on you, you okay. remember that name, you see him walk off, and you let him know, all right, man, you're, you're going to get yours eventually you here. Give him that wave this, as they turn around yeah. and look where it came from. We just started this game. It's going to be yeah. a long game. Yeah. But Kennesaw's not really putting themselves in position to even do anything like that. Unless they want to get some cheap shots on guys walking off dead. <laughs> but, uh, but you could. But That's UConn's one way to get paid on people, huh? Yeah, UConn's just doing really well right now. They look real sharp. They're, they're, they, they've got this field dialed in, up 3-0 to zero right now. We're going to take a quick break. We'll get right back in this match. Yeah. We are back, 2016 National Collegiate Paintball Association Championships. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on the webcast. And it is a gloomy Florida morning here, but this is pretty much perfect paintball weather. It's slightly overcast, it's actually completely overcast, but also not that humid. It's not cold, it's not hot. This is perfect if you're gonna play a lot of paintball. Well, perfect paintball where there would be just yeah. thunder and storm well, and just well, bunkers flying everywhere. Yeah, knock on some wood because that's what's coming our way here later on this afternoon. Yeah. Hopefully that will blow past us. But it's like they say about Florida weather, if you don't like it, just uh, wait you know, 20 minutes and it should change. It's all up to the paintball gods at that point. <sighs> well, they've been unkind to us over the years. Especially here at Florida. Yeah, well, normally we get the heat here. Uh, so this is actually a little bit of a gift this morning if we can breeze past that storm that's coming our way. So right now, heading into this point, we'll see if Kennesaw can fight back as they take a very unconventional run going all the way into that red zone on the D side, but he Shut gets, up. yeah, he gets chewed up. I mean, Kennesaw, or Yukon, uh, making a, you know, methodical pushes here and a flag party again for Kennesaw. They get another penalty? I think they did. I think the ref did not throw it up because he just got, the ref was about to throw it and just got blazed down. Yeah, I look over and see the red, the major penalty yeah. indicator in his hand and definitely uh, body rubbing his arm. Yeah, body, yeah, it looks like he got <laughs> shot there trying to pull that penalty. Yeah. So Kennesaw is going to make this a long morning for themselves if they keep getting penalties. Yeah. UConn taking full advantage of this gift here. I think that was the last player there. Oh, oh Stingle getting a penalty, which pulls out Tluck. Shame, shame on you, sir. And we see a bunch of bodies also. Okay, I thought they were walking <laughs> off, but they're just slowly walking to get the flag because everybody's dead on Kennesaw's side. So right now, this is going to be a... No, I was going to say, it's going to be a... I would... I was thinking there was going to be a slow walk in because both teams have penalties and there's about the same time on those penalties. Yeah. So to kind of take the penalties off for both teams, it's a win-win for both situations. But instead, 
Kennesaw just to want to preserve. I think as much. I think the reason why they're doing that is they want as much of that game clock to stay on as possible. Yeah. Because they're down a ton of points, so they want as much time to work with as they possibly can. Definitely been a long morning for Kennesaw right now. Maybe they're thinking, hey, maybe switch it up. Five on five ain't working out for us. Maybe four on four gonna work out for us for a little bit here. Uh, that's <laughs> that's a low percentage play. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I mean, you know the. We're we're really seeing that the refs pulling tons of penalties out there today, and no mercy. And out if there. you're if you're but if you're a team getting ready for that, so you know, before this match, we saw Drexel and and uh, and Fresno State play, and congratulations to Drexel for taking that victory. And then before that, we saw Liberty and, and the U.S. Naval Academy play. But what did we see in those two matches? Tons of penalties. Yeah. So if I'm getting ready to play the next set, and I see tons of penalties in the first two sets before me, I'm gonna tell my guys, hey, the refs are on it today. Let's be real careful about everything. You could see there, uh, Fritz in the ref, you know, in that in that replay. Oh, right there, Ooh, that smart. So there's Stingle, and the referee comes and kind of tackles yeah, him and pushes him in. Yeah, right. <laughs> What's going on here? Ref getting a little physical with Stingle in there. I need an adult. I need an adult. So, yeah, the refs just bullying everybody around out there in this first couple <laughs> sets. Man, I was talking. I was talking to one of the Temple coaches, and he was asking me, "Is this for reals? All these flags being thrown up?" And I was like, "Man, you're watching it too." Well, I mean, this is the the national championships yeah. in the paintball world. I, you know, I can understand why, you know, you want the referees to be relatively strict out here to, to kind of preserve. I just, I'm, I, I'm not really a big fan of those like ticky tack safety penalties with the goggles on. Now, those are important because you know we can't have you know, the safety. Obviously, with needs to be at, at, at a premium out here. Yeah. It's just frustrating to watch penalties that don't really affect the play. Uh, you know knock teams and, and, and take their body count down. So now off the break, Kennesaw getting up to that 50 yard line. Referee is in there uh, checking him out. He's clean. looking towards that D side of the field. Oh, here comes the run through. Nope, not the home. Oh, head Ooh, massage. And he's still alive. And running through. Hands out a head massage and just keeps walking. Looks like uh, Kennesaw into the snake as they lose another player coming out the back. Looks like Dorito side. Uh, Connecticut player coming down the Dorito side well, here. Well, this is, this is what Kennesaw was hoping for here. As they're on a power play, still a minute and 11 seconds left on that UConn penalty. Yeah. Time ticking off in this first half. This is a must-win point for them. If they go down five, I don't care how much time is left. It's going to be incredibly hard for them to, to score those points. With the two-on-one here, Kennesaw looking like they're in the driver's seat. You do need to pay attention to that penalty. So this is Enriquez doing it. Like it's supposed to be yeah. done here. Bunker to bunker, gun up, shooting those lanes. Slicing the pie as you would. Oh. And yeah, perfect job by yeah. by Enrique so far. And UConn forced to concede that point. Still 38 seconds to go on the major penalty for UConn. With 3.20 to go in this first half. And Kennesaw finally getting their first point on the board here. Making a, <coughs> making a last minute push there. You'd see, as we're looking in the pits for Kennesaw, they should Let's be pretty go, happy with that point that they just scored. There's Weiss nice. getting a little pumped up. That's Trying that's what you want to see, up. a little fire in your teammates. So we can see this replay here as there goes the run through. Kennesaw on the attack. That was number four, uh, Cameron. Cameron Heinen. He comes through, takes care of the W, and keeps going, looking yeah. for the next guy. Kind of not able to make it all the way to the backfield, but he got his job done. Yeah, that was his job. Go, you know, go around, take that guy out down, and if you're still alive, keep going. Well, if, yeah, if you're, you've been the guy up the center before, and if you're in that position, it's hit the check boxes. All right, get into your spot, stay alive, check. Yeah. All right, what's, what's my job? Is my job supposed to shut down the D side or the snake side? Now I'm up there in the D side, check, right? But yeah. if you're not feeling any pressure and you're watching bodies come off, look to go on the attack. So it was a great job there by Heinen, especially when you're down points like that. You want to put that quick point on the board, utilize that up the center of the attack, and try to pull a little bit closer, which is exactly what happened. Yeah. So. At that point, once you ran past that bunker after you took that guy down, I mean, there's nowhere for him to hide. So the only other option for him to do is just keep going. Keep going looking for the next body. So we see the next set of bodies here coming on to play this next point for UConn. Miner coming out here. Yeah, Siofari uh, had played it really well in that first point. Haven't seen much of him since then. But uh, UConn with some depth. They got 10 solid guys on UConn squad. 10 strong. Kennesaw not playing with quite as many. Uh, eight guys on their start or on their roster. We've had a lot of teams come in with 
five coming six players over the know? years yeah. yeah we're seeing some deep rosters yeah. so far i think they're learning their lesson you know not only that it's like like you said earlier oh and there's a move up the middle well, Kennesaw double yeah. stacking up that center. One gets taken out, but one is still in there. That's why you double stack that center. And he's still alive. Referee's going to get in there and make sure he's clean, though. And it looks like Tluck is able to get into the snake here for UConn. No one on the snake side at all from Kennesaw, though. Kennesaw with the W, though. Yeah, so now Kennesaw, oh, and he comes oh. right around and just gets decimated <laughs> by Tluck. So, Catches it. Yeah, it was uh, Christopher Weiss up there in the center. For Kennesaw, he was able to stay alive in that first engagement, but Tluck kind of went to sleep on that snake, and Tluck just shot him about three, four times. Just working up the snake. Just slowly, methodically working up the snake, trying to get that shot across the field. Yeah, Tluck is improving his position. Again, not looking at... There's no one in the snake yeah. with him. He does have a body in front of him, though. Kennesaw was able to get here and play on your screen, but he also has to worry about that D side as well, so he switched his gun over that way. That's going to make Tluck able to stand up and be able to get on his horse over here. Now past the 50 yard line. Over. Here comes the pain train, sir. The pain train, all aboard. So another solid point for the Huskies as they also get their body out of the penalty box. They will be five strong heading into this next point. And there's Scroggins coming off. So let's see this replay here. So there's the doubled up attack up the center for Kennesaw. And you see the first one come through on the D side. Weiss able to stay alive, he Christopher around. Weiss, and then here comes Christopher Weiss come over. Wow. No idea that Tluck had made it in the snake. <laughs> That's just a lack of communication there. There's been a, a few a few games I've been watching, uh, actually a few points, more than a few points I've been watching where the communication is just not there. Yeah, yeah, communication needs to be stepped up by all the teams. Only a couple teams are doing it well. Let's check in again with our third member of our broadcast team, Lauren Kelly. Thanks. I'm here with Cameron Enriquez from Kennesaw. Now, you guys have a pretty big uh, point spread to make up here in order to get a win. What struggles have you guys talked about in the pit that you're having that's stopping you from getting those points you so desperately need? Um, I mean, like right now, they're playing like the pocket really well, and they're just like filling out, and we've got to like hold the lens. And we're just like, we're failing to do that right now, but we're going to keep trying. Got to have fun with it. We've seen you uh, double up on that W bunker in the center. You said you can play any spot on the field. Can you kind of break down that W bunker in the center of the field and what the best way is to play it that you guys have found? Well, I mean, right now we're just like really trying anything. Um, we're getting to like the W to try and stop them from like spreading out wide and getting that. But um, we tried it right there, but it kind of failed. But we can keep giving a go at it. All right. We'll see if they can execute on the field. Back to you guys. Well, they definitely need to keep giving a go at it because there's 12 minutes and 11 seconds left in this match. Still 2-11 in this first half in a full second half. So, you know, Kennesaw, they need to not... It's, uh, I, I like the... Enriquez, he seemed uh, excited to be yeah, here yeah. And, and ready to have some fun, but they're not completely out of this game. Yeah, they're down by four, but uh, there's still a lot of paintball to be played here. So they're going to... The snake goes Kennesaw for the first time today. Kennesaw runs all the way wide. They may take Snake one off the break, all the way back bunker behind him, and that player is going to get pulled out. So they do lose one body over here. Yeah. That was they got a guy in the Snake, which kind of makes up for that. Well, that was an aggressive yeah. run to run three bodies out wide on this layout and not send anyone up the center. Yeah, well, I mean, they've been going up the center and just been getting decimated out of the center. So apparently they think, eh, let's, let's go wide this time. Well, that last play worked until Weiss came over and got stitched up by Tluck. Yeah. If he had just kind of stayed in there and played it a little bit, a little bit, a uh, little bit more conservative, he would have still been alive. So it's not, it's not ineffective. It just needs to be played a little bit tighter. Got Hampton here in the snake for Kennesaw. UConn losing a body pushing up on the D side. I don't think that was Hampton. I think he took that uh, shot from in the center. But Hampton is in the spot right now, uh, trying to help things here, but. The body to keep them from filtering into that Dorito side right here. So there was Hampton on your screen, but look at, look at the body language from Yukon. Yeah. All the way out here on his bunker, Stingle in the snake. Well, you got Kennesaw with two players now into the snake here. Well, it looked like Stingle wanted to move up for a second, but he got beat back in because Kennesaw doubled yep. up here in the snake. You can see the left hand portion of your screen. Kennesaw that. making a move on the Dorito side now, trying to find that snake player. I like the fight I'm seeing out of Kennesaw right yeah. now. Well, they, they need this fight right now. They, they need to get back into this game, and that's the only way they're going to do it. Well, we always talk about sense of urgency. Yeah. When pe when teams and players get in these situations, we always see in their body language, like, where's your sense of urgency? And you can see there oh, is a sense of urgency. Oh, Stingle head blown off. Yeah, Stingle gets shot, but he was able to get, I think he like double tapped yeah. the goggles there for the uh, other player in the snake. It was Hine. 
And there goes going to go a point here with enough time to hang it up. Nice work. So Kennesaw now only down by three, again with the whole second half to play. Like this sits, it's not over yet. I like know? the fight I'm yeah. seeing in Kennesaw though. You know, you know, they Weiss was trying to get them energetic in there, you know, maybe it worked. Starting to come out here with a little bit more fire going wide instead of going up the middle. They probably had a little com combo in the pits there. Hey, middle's not working, we need to go wide. Well, I didn't, I wouldn't say the middle wasn't working for them. I mean, yeah, they, well, were getting, they weren't playing. They were getting, the, yeah, well, they, they were getting beat. They were getting beat in there, but they were getting bunkered out a little bit. But still, that is a, that's a very, that's a very and crucial and important bunker. The team that wins this tournament is going to be able to play that center bunker effectively. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, same layout we saw from Dallas at the at first NXL event, and we saw battle after battle after battle commence in that center. So we're going to continue to see that. So yeah, now Kennesaw able to, you know, get a point here by going out wide. It was a big risk to send three bodies out wide on this snake side but they were able to get two of them out alive and then they finally started whittling out the bodies for Yukon so that was a solid point from Kennesaw yeah definitely yeah, definitely having Hampton in, in in there in the beginning was definitely good for the moots key so let's check out this replay here they had two bodies in there you can see the back player here in the left-hand portion of your screen that was uh, Cameron yeah Cameron in there again and he got double tapped to Stingle ran out wide but Stingle wasn't able to get both of them so he scalped himself coming in. Yeah. So now just 20 seconds to go here in the first half of this matchup. Kennesaw still in this game. I think they are. Yeah. I mean, we got if, a whole half. If they had catfish, if they got blown out that last point, I, I think I'd, we'd be yeah. singing a different tune here. But because they played very solid in that last point, uh, I liked the aggressive play. They were able to live most, get most of their guys alive through that break and then push up on that D side of the field. The D side of the field is, you know, that, that's a strong side. I mean, the, you can get things done on the snake side, but it's a little bit more counterpunch. you got to be real smart over here on this snake side of the field. That D side is a very strong side. It looks like they're not coming snake side strong at all, Kenneth. Instead, they went to Riedel side. If you're trying to... I li but I like the, the script. But I like here. that. I like yeah. that play. And Into the W from the Doritos. Look, he just walked in there, Matt. You see that? Yeah, so Kennesaw here, though, pushing. They're trying to close this out, but uh, they're just not going to have enough time. Be careful that they don't get a point as Heinen completely commits. <laughs> so Yukon able to keep the attack from Kennesaw from being effective, and they will head here into the second half with a three point lead. Five to two is the score. But still, even though they are losing by three, I do like what I'm seeing out of Kennesaw. Yeah, they're coming out aggressive. You know, they're not coming down with their heads, head, you know, hanging low. You know, you can tell by, by, by language. Yeah, they got a, there's a lot of tournament to play here. We're just getting things going in the prelims. It's just the morning. It's just getting started. So we're going to have a five-minute break in between halves. If Kennesaw, they, they're still losing, it seems like, a body, though, almost every single break. Yeah. UConn is just playing tighter. Looks like UConn is definitely shooting their lanes a lot smarter and picking their lanes the ones that they want to shoot. And uh, looks like Kennesaw is trying to flip the script on them because they were going snake side heavy. Now, last point, they went, you know, Dorito heavy and just trying to figure out what's going to be easier for them to come down the field on, I guess. Yeah, so let's check in with Lauren. She's down with the Huskies in their pits with uh, Connor Cluck. Thanks, I am here with Connor Tluck. Now, as we know, that center W bunker is extremely important, but if you can uh, really execute on the snake side, you can get a lot of kills as well. Can you kind of break down the snake side for me and the most productive bunkers that you can get into? Yeah, um, so far we've been, uh, we were chopping them up off the break, so we ended up just keep rolling our guns and they've gotten desperate, so they've been running out wide. So really just focusing up on those lanes has been a big help for us. You guys have been doing a really good job of playing the pocket. When do you know if you want to play the pocket or go more, uh, have like an outside, play on the outsides off the break? Uh, what, what we've seen from this uh, field is that it's really tough to go out wide just because of how it's set up. So we've been pushing the middle almost exclusively um, just because of the danger that when you go wide, you can get clipped by those lanes. Kennesaw is having a hard time executing. What do you think uh, some of the teams that don't have as much experience are going to struggle with on this layout? Um, I think staying alive off the break is going to be tough, um, as well as really locking those lanes in. Uh, if you're a little more inexperienced, it's a little harder to hit those shots, and then um, you're in trouble from there. All right. Thank you so much, Connor. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, Maddie. Thanks, Lauren. Well, that was a pretty accurate breakdown of this field and what's been going on out there. So, yeah, yeah the Huskies with the three-point lead. But we're going to be right back with more of the second half action. Stick with us.
Welcome back here, 2016 NCPA Championships. I'm Matty Marshall, alongside Kevin Catfish Arcilla. And we have just a few moments to go before the start of this second half here. Beautiful paintball weather. It's very cloudy out here in uh, Central Florida. Uh, but again, if you're playing the game, this is kind of what you want to yeah, see. Especially in Florida. Yeah, oh, exactly. No humidity, which really affects the paint and your stamina. Here we go. These teams will now switch sides, and Kennesaw will be on your right. Yukon on your left. Kennesaw coming up to the W. The secondary move into W. Looks like Kennesaw or uh, Connecticut losing one of the back Dorito players, keeping all back bunkers. Yeah, Heinen up there in the snake again, or uh, up there in the center again for Kennesaw. I do like the play calls I'm seeing out of Kennesaw, though. They're not scared to go wide. It's really hard to get out wide on this field. You, could, you heard the interview with UConn as uh, they're saying, yeah, we're going to try to shoot these guys as they go out wide, and the body walks off really for UConn, so the advantage right now goes to the Owls. Husky's not making any kind of moves. They're keeping all... What, and as I'm speaking, they jump into the snake here. Rep coming in there to check him. Make yeah. sure he's alive here. Well, he's checking out his feet. I saw some stuff spray or some paint spray off what could have been either the ground or Tlux feet, but yeah, he's, he's clean. Good. So and another body though comes off early, dying out of his spot in that back center. Tluck does have a little help behind him. And Kennesaw, uh, Kennesaw is now pushing check. up into Snake too. Looks like Tluck asked for a check on the back of his head. Uh, that looks all good. Looking across the field for that Dorito shot. Trying to catch that uh W slipping again. Well, it looks like Hampton might have got shot on a bounce shot. Oh, I think he did. I think Hampton. I think Hampton got shot. If, I think there, what the bounce shot is is shooting the back, the fr actually the front of, but what what was uh, his back yeah. behind him, bouncing that paintball off of the snake one and into his back is uh, how that penalty got a little tricky trick right there. there. So right now you can see, still though, Heinen up there in the center for Kennesaw. Gonna th is this a three on two here? I think we got three Kennesaw players alive. Oh, well, make, Ken make it two Kennesaw players alive. Oh, oh. Heinen gets stitched up by he Stingle. Got a back massage. Yeah, and Stingle's trying to close this no. point out oh, single-handedly. Oh, head massage for the guy in the Dorito. Nice little two-pack run through by Stingle up there in the center to save this point for UConn. But just when it was looking good for Kennesaw, they got that minor penalty. Penalty, which will come off the clock, if you know, because they're going to lose this point. But still, that penalty was what caused them to be in this situation. So just when it was looking good for them, UConn with that run through by Stingle, he saved day. that point. Yeah, he absolutely saved that point for them. Nice work by John Stingle. That's another one of those re those returning players. Yeah. I'm expecting big tournaments out of John Stingle, Connor Tluck, or I'm sorry, Connor Tluck and uh, Vernon Dacus, um, who we haven't seen as much as Stingle or Tluck. Do you think we're, we're, we're witnessing a lot more deeper ro uh, rosters just because of the rotation and just because of when, you know, these guys graduate, at least they have, you know, hey, we take, you know, 12 guys with us, get some guys some reps in there, get them some experience, and then when the guys graduate, you know, we got the guy coming in. Well, we'll touch on that in a second. Let's check out this replay here. So you could see the referee pulling him out, and he was hit on the inside part of or the outside part of his right thigh. So I think that was a bounce shot. And here comes Stingle with the run through, gets one, shot in the booty, pauses up, yes, <laughs> and then able to close the gap here and give this guy a head massage. So and then waves off the rest of his boys. So again, nice work by John Stingle. But so to kind of mention what you were talking about. I think that the depth in these rosters, I think it doesn't have much to do with the format. Obviously, you want to it, you want to have as, as deep of a roster as possible, particularly you know coming to Florida at the end of, uh, at, for these events yeah. at the end of the season to get the championship. And normally, it's really hot and humid down here. Um, again, different weather here for this event. We'll see if the, if this stays this way. But I think that the deep roster has a lot to do with just who happens to be playing paintball at your your college. You know, at your university, who who can you who can you actually get to to get to come out to practices and try to get better and and um, and I think that that just you know that's a little bit of luck, a little bit of luck as to who's you know who, who is yeah looking at a little some neck welts there for UConn. This is girlfriend's gonna be very upset with those hickeys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Florida. Ardo? You got a girlfriend out in yeah, Florida? Yeah, sure. You got shot in yeah, your neck. Yeah, sure. sure. So here we go with under eight minutes to go in this match. UConn with a commanding four-point lead. Oh, Kennesaw players getting blazed out of the back of the snake. The Huskies coming out this time, taking a W off the break, not coming out con conservative like they did last time. Looking to take up more ground. With the W just trying to close off that snake side. Well, right now. Oh, just, yeah. 
Yeah, Kennesaw with a desperation run out of that back center. And like a one on five. Or yeah, something nothing like he could do was minor. Yeah. So nice job by minor up in that center, tall enough to be able to play that whole spot. Oh, but what was that? Oh, you got shot. Yeah, so looks like that was Fam number zero for UConn getting a spin for them, but getting shot out. I'm not really sure what he was doing. You okay, got. Oh, looks like oh, Luck dies out of Luck. his spot too. Almost gets the flag. Judge putting it back in his pocket. So Kennesaw not really having an answer for UConn, and looks like UConn is going to put another point on the board here. <coughs> Funny so, part about a few of these judges here, they have they actually have the flags in their hands, not in their pockets. Well, in their the, hands. Well, the way that things have gone this yeah. morning, I could understand <laughs> why they're ready. <laughs> Give Got me those a reason. penalties just poised. Give me a reason. I dare you. Well, things are not going Kennesaw's way right now. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly. She's down in their pit. Thanks. As you're seeing on the field, Kennesaw is having a difficult time figuring out how to beat UConn. It's not that much different here in the pits. It's very calm. There's not a ton of talk about strategy happening. What they are talking about is keeping a positive mental attitude. If they want any chance uh, at, at getting some points on the board with seven minutes left, they need to stay positive and believe in each other in order to get these kills. Back to you. Well, there's, there's a lot of things they need to do. Um, most importantly, they need to keep bodies alive off the break. UConn has been doing a good job. Kennesaw's trying to run out wide because they'll likely listen to, uh, I think that was Tluck actually, uh, during the interview before we went to the break yeah. at halftime. He said they're getting desperate. They're running out wide. They're trying to spread the field, and we're getting those off the break shots on them. That is also continuing to happen for Kennesaw here. So, you know, might need to, especially the fact they're down by five, they have to push up that center. They really don't have a choice now. It's really hard to score quick points uh, getting out wide unless you have also a couple guns up in that center shooting the opposing team getting out wide but UConn you know look for them to put to roll that conservative pocket play keep their bodies in the center roll those guns get those those off the break shots out on Kennesaw as they try to get out wide and then you know attack the center as well you know that Kennesaw has to push and push hard so where are they gonna come most likely they're gonna come up the center so send a guy up there to deal with them and stop that aggression in the beginning Kennesaw was doing that but they were just getting beat playing sloppy in the middle so on the breakout, yeah. UConn actually, they Kennesaw. they decided to go out wide. And there goes Kennesaw running oh, three. Four. They, are, four they are quadruple stacking yeah. the center. And they lose two just in case. So still two bodies alive there up in the center. Oh, here he comes. Trade out right here. There's going to be a head massage. I feel a head massage coming on. And right it comes around, takes oh. out one, and they trade out. Trade. That's still one body, though, up in the center alive for Kennesaw is Christopher oh, Weiss. Man, that's not a good spot to be in, especially if you're by yourself right now for the Kennesaw player up the middle. Yeah, <laughs> Kennesaw losing the rest of their yeah. bodies, so now it's just yeah, Weiss just all by Weiss. his lonesome up in that center. Weiss needs to start wheeling and dealing here, my friend. Oh, just get a face massage. So that is going to clear the field here for <laughs> Kennesaw. UConn, another dominant point for them. Kennesaw, I must have heard you, man, because they sent everyone. Um, Matt's saying we need to go to the middle. They, 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 sent, they sent the house. Yeah. They sent four bodies up into that center. Actually, that's the first time I've seen that all year. No it, one in the Millennium did it. No one in the NXL did it. That's the very first yeah. time. In they competitive got there. Paintball. They yeah. got there with what's impressive. All four. Well, let's watch this. So here comes the double run up the center. On the delay, they send another body and then quadruple stacking up that center 50. <laughs> yeah. So oh, take slayed. a picture, everyone at yeah. home. Take a screenshot. No one's done that so far in competitive paintball this year in the 2016 season. Oh, and there's the facial. But it didn't work out for him. So there's a facial for you, sir. Like Thanks we all, like yeah, like we always say, Ben don't break. Yeah. And UConn is looking like a favorite here with just a not a quite a flawless performance, but they're doing everything right. Yeah, they're definitely doing a lot of things right that Kennesaw's doing wrong. Kennesaw seems to want to go up the middle, but they're just getting beat, man. I mean, they ran four players up there, and they all got shot. Yeah, they're trying. At least they are trying. So we're going to be right back after a quick break. Stick with us. We are back here, 30 seconds to go before the start of this next point. 
Six points separates these two teams. It's been all UConn if you're just joining us. Six minutes and two seconds to go here in the, in the second half. And after this game, we're going to have the East Carolina Pirates going to be taking on the Temple Owls in the last set of the morning division before we take a lunch break. And then the first set after lunch is going to be Miami Redhawks taking on the Purdue Boilermakers. Let's see Kennesaw what, what they have up their sleeves on this one. Maybe five up the middle? Why not? Nothing else is working. <laughs> So now they're going to send one up the center. He's going to pause at the Dorito in the yellow zone. Try to catch coming, someone going into the snake. It looks like they're just trying to keep five alive, yeah. and then you can see their break. Now we're switching over to UConn's side of the field on your screen. They're just losing their gunfights, and, I mean, that's key. You've got to be able to win your gun battles. So Kennesaw going away from trying to score the, the quick points, thus pretty much conceding this match to UConn. Oh. UConn player coming out. Of well, I think that's two bodies. No, it's a, that's yeah, that's three, two bodies. Three left for UConn. So two bodies coming off early here for UConn. Three bodies left alive for them. I believe Kennesaw has four bodies left alive. Yep, there they are on your screen. Four players left alive for Kennesaw. Playing more conservative. Trying to stay alive. It's like uh, the Huskies aren't in any position to make any kind of aggressive move at this point. Well, they don't need to. Yeah. With a six point lead, all they need to do is just take some extra pods out, roll those guns, and keep Kennesaw from pushing forward. That's the stock play you always see when teams are up by a ton of points. Yeah. I mean, they gotta come to them at this yeah. point. Yeah, I will they lose another yeah. body. Yeah. <laughs> so, UConn loses some bodies. We're seeing some good gunfights for Kennesaw right now, as they've taken three players for UConn out of their out of their spots from gun, just pure gunfighting. Trying to pick them apart here one by one. Looks like one of the uh, one of the guys from Kennesaw is having some problems with his gun. I'm just you can see their bottom yeah. portion of your screen. I'm just surprised that no one in Kennesaw is actually communicating to each other, saying, "Hey, man, it's a four on two. Let's make something happen at this point." You know. Well, yeah, you want to win quick points. Yeah. Get it to four on two, and then start making moves. Yeah. Or just sit there and try to shoot them out. Well, UConn's doing what they need to do. Uh, at least the two bodies left alive. I think that's Stingle on your screen there. Yeah. Stingle, Stingle's been stepping up for them. Yeah, he's a returning player. I've seen him the past couple years, and the, the, the he looks really house. good. Uh, Miner has also been playing well for UConn. Tluck, um, Siofari had a first couple, a uh, couple good first points. Looks like the bunkers uh, shrinking here for Stingle, well, just a little bit, getting smaller as uh, Kennesaw is coming up the Dorito side. Stingle doesn't have a lot of paint left either. No, he does not. He's not shooting right now either. <laughs> Well, I just let him run into the guns. I mean, yeah. At this point, for under four minutes, we got this win sewed up. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep my gun posted one side. And there's the other guy left alive. Keep his gun, but just cross it up. Yeah. Look in front of each other. Keep each other alive at that point. I mean, they might just wake these guys out three minutes right here. Oh, Kennesaw coming off. Stingle winning a gunfight. Oh, Stingle making a move. And this is Stingle. Yeah, Stingle. Looking, gun up, head downfield, comes around, blasts Boom. one, goes and grabs a flag. Just textbook play here by Stingle. It's another day at the office. You know, when we're talking about who's been playing, every every year, every, I love seeing it, every year, who, who's going to be our best players? Who are our all-stars? So right now, Stingle looking like he's definitely one of them here for UConn. Definitely standing out there. Walking off with a little bit of swagger in his step, and rightfully so. You know, a lot of time off that clock. Yeah, that's what they, they needed to do. And they won. It was a two on four. Yeah, they're trying to hit double digits. Uh, Drexel hit the double digit mark. Actually, no, it was uh, Liberty. Liberty hit double digits against uh, U.S. Naval Academy. <coughs> that score was ten to four. Oh, really? Yeah. Then Drexel comes out, beats Fresno State eight to four, eight to five. A little bit closer game. Yeah. Uh, Fresno throw that one, threw that one away with. Tons of penalties. I think they had eight penalties in that match. Or there was eight total penalties in the match. Most of them on Fresno. Uh, didn't they forget to start with someone in the, in the penalty box at one point? It was a series of disastrous occurrences. Well, let's check in with Lauren Kelly. Thanks. I'm here with Charlie Ger Gerald. Now, uh, you guys are most likely not going to take this win. UConn has been winning, but you haven't given up. You did actually try a really impressive play, stacking four people behind that W bunker. Is that something you guys had just dis discussed in practices leading up to nationals or just a last ditch curveball to try to get some momentum going? Oh, uh, yeah, we've talked about it before. It's just kind of like a oddball just to go straight up just to get super aggressive try to get a point back you know that's what we're just trying to do here game's not looking too good right now but you know we're still here to play paintball 
we're here to just please, please, please the crowd and you know, that's, yeah. Well, that was a very entertaining play. We'll see if they can get any points on the board here. Back to you guys. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, you can see a little frustration. Yeah. On, uh, I can understand. We've all been there before. <laughs> yeah, no we've, answers. No hey, answers for any questions. If you have played tournament paintball, I don't care how good a team you were on, you've been on your fair share of the bad side of a beating before. Yeah. Everyone's been on that bad side of the beating. And when just questions being thrown at you, you just don't have answers. Yeah. So. I mean, what can you say, really? But yeah. they need to keep their heads up because there's lots more paintball to play this They're weekend. So aggressive up the middle here again. And kind of losing the player into the Doritos. Can it, UConn just sitting back and just chopping them up as they come. Yeah, and that's what you're going to see. Yeah. That's all you're going to see from UConn for the next two minutes and 40 seconds. Get in your spots, take yeah. a couple extra pods out, roll your guns. Keep them from coming you, up. You that's know they got to push yeah. at you. Uh, losing. Oh. oh. Yeah. That so, hurt. Yeah, you're seeing this bodies coming off right now. Desperation runs from Kennesaw. And then here yeah. comes Miner, yeah. who's one of the players who's playing really well for UConn up that center. So Miner now past the 50 yard line at the pin and trying to take out the last couple players here for Kennesaw and you see them now walking off. So that is going to be another awesome point here for UConn. And it looks like they have five bodies alive showing. We grab that flag. Five alive. Doing a little pirouette. Pirouette. And a little slow walk to the tank gonna, the flag you're here. You're gonna huh? put that 10th point on the board. Yeah, and this right now, I mean, you know, there's no reason for Kennesaw to concede the point unless they just want to play more paintball. Um, that would be the only reason because I mean, this game's over. I think they, yeah. I think they, they try. I mean, they might just let all the time tick off here. And we might just see, no, they are going to blow yeah. the horn. So they finally blow the horn. No reason for UConn to get that extra point, really, other than just run up the score. Yeah. But, I mean, it doesn't look like, I mean, UConn trying to run up a score here. I mean, they're taking all back bunkers and Kennesaw is just running into. You know, we're in no, the you're, lanes. You're, you're, you're right. They're not trying to run the score up. They're just doing that. Hey, take all the back bunkers, yeah. let the time off clock, try to shoot them when they attack. So, right now, the beating will continue here. UConn putting up a ton of points against Kennesaw. We're going to be right back. So we are back. This game is over. If you need to go up and get a beverage to get ready for the <laughs> East Carolina Pirates Temple Owls match, which is coming at you next, a before we head break. to a lunch break, this yeah. is the time to do it. If your girlfriend's been yelling at you to take the trash out, you should do that. Yeah. Take the dog out. Need to actually focus on that email. Yeah. You know that you're writing at work. We know you're. We know you're watching yeah. at work. We caught you. Yeah. If you need to finish off that email focus, <laughs> this is the time to do it. Or finish off your homework that you're watching as well. <laughs> yeah. Try and watch your roommate out here playing paintball. So, you know, though, I mean, Kennesaw's getting beat up right now, but to be honest, they're just, again, not making horrid mistakes. Uh, I like the game plans. I mean, you could see they had a lot of fight in them, um, but they're just getting beat out of their bunkers, just losing too many guys, and they need to really kind of go back and look at those game plans. And if they're going to continue to go out wide, they oh. need to also have nope. that up the center game plan uh, dialed in a little bit more, as we see now. Yeah, just walking straight from the <laughs> from the station into the pits. Yeah, literally didn't Two stop the momentum. Yeah. Get shot, trying to get out wide here, snake side. It's, it's tough. So if you're watching over here and you're not familiar with this layout, this is a tough layout to get out wide. And uh, you really kind of, you can't just keep doing it over and over again. You have to shoot back at the people shooting at you. This angle just getting blazed. We got, uh, looks like we have Miner trying to shut down the snake side over here. Try to keep the two Kennesaw players at bay. I like we how, a, oh. I, I like how Miner's playing. Yeah. He's just a safety valve at that point right yeah. there. Cause he's, oh, going to the W. Looking like he's just gonna get blazed in the back as well. Looks like Kennesaw gonna try to put one more point up on the board well, here. Kennesaw with an attack down on the, uh, on the, that important D side of the field. I mean, we this layout, you can, really get a lot of effective points won from that D side of the field. Hampton if you push smart, it was, uh, right now. Yeah, it was Gerald. 
So Gerald on the D side kind of blew the door open a little bit, allowed uh, Hampton here to get into the Snake 50. So there's Hampton number 18 from Kennesaw on your screen, just trying to put another point on the board for Pride here. Yeah. That I think UConn that's player just trying to stay alive there. I think that's Stingle, the last player left alive here for UConn. Stingle really emerging as the all-star here. He's gonna get uh, just. I don't think that's Sting. I think that's just one of the. Oh no, that's that's uh, newcomer. Fam, one newcomer just trying to get some reps in. Yeah, that was this Fam. Point. You're right. So Stingle taking a rest, getting ready for their next match. Nice work by Kennesaw to put a point on the board here. Go. Weiss, I, Weiss wasn't playing bad up in that center. And we got a game all of a sudden. Well, I don't know about all that, but uh, <laughs> but I do like how Weiss had been playing the center. So let's let's get a little replay. So you can see in that snake, Yukon gets shot out, trying to shoot out wide. And then here comes the move as uh, Hampton comes down and shoots up uh, Fam. Look at him, freshman. What's going on here? Yeah, Fam getting a spin out there and getting run down. And then Weiss was able there to finish it out and put the third point on the board. I think UConn's starting to give uh, some of their, their younger guys some some reps here. Hey, why not, right? Point, yeah. You want to get as many reps as possible and imp improve your crew across the board. So congratulations to UConn. But before we sign off, let's check in with Lauren Kelly. Thanks. I am here with John Stingle. Congratulations on that huge, significant win against Kennesaw. Now, you did lose your first match by just one point against FAU. You said you learned a lot and had a lot of experience during that match, though. What were some things that you learned uh, losing that first match and coming into this one? Well, we uh, we were letting them shoot us off the break in spots that we, we thought we had shots from. So it was really big to know, you know, you can go to these spots off the break, or you definitely have these shots off the break. And uh, coming out of that, we realized that if, if the other team was going to get aggressive on us, then the way to win was to, to go right back at them. And so I think that what you saw in this match was even when they came up the middle or they went hard on the Dorito side, we were able to, you know, take that move and use it against them because we caught them out of position or being over aggressive. Well that is a great lesson that even when you lose one match you take the lessons you can find from that loss and execute in your next match. So congratulations. Thank you. Stay tuned guys. We have more coming up. So the star from UConn, John Stingle, giving us a little bit of info. Man, he played outstanding for them to help them take this victory here against the Kennesaw State Owls. So stick with us. We got lots more paintball coming at you here from the 2016 National Collegiate Paintball Association Championships. We'll see you in just a few.